Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening whenever you are watching this video. Today, I would like to invite you to learn about a very important and useful life tool that will enable you to live a happy and fulfilled life even in the midst of trying times. Pandemic, COVID-19, transition to working from home, transition to studying from home, and all the other challenges you are facing right now. We're going to explore all of that and also find ways, find effective ways on how you will be able to navigate life through all of these things. By the way, my name is Miss Lovely Anna Ventus and I am a psychologist at Child Fam Possibilities and Psychosocial Services. And I would like you to sit back and relax as I welcome you to our webinar entitled Thriving, Not Just Surviving, Resilience and Empowerment in Times of Uncertainty. So, um, in nearly nine years of my teaching and counseling experience, my, the favorite wisdom that I learned in life is that life is difficult, it is challenging, and it can be complicated. Whoa, okay, favorite ko talaga yun, ano? Life is difficult, it's challenging, and it can be very complicated. Yes, I like it because you know what? Um, when I learned that, I also learned another thing, which is um, it has provided us with all the simplest tools, okay? Simplest of tools to make living it worthwhile, to make living life fulfilling, even if it is difficult and challenging, okay? It's a paradox. It is difficult. You will have a lot of challenges along the way. At the same time, it's gracious enough and generous enough to provide us with all the tools that we need to make it worthwhile, okay? And these tools are actually very simple and free. You just have to be really willing, okay? Again, you have to be receptive. You have to be willing to use these tools. And one of these tools is actually resilience, okay? Maybe you have heard about resilience somewhere, read it somewhere, and well, this is your first time to actually hear about it. Now, let's start by defining it. So it's defined by John Claude Laprie. It's from the Latin word resilere, which means to rebound or spring back. According to American Psychological Association, it's a process of adapting well. It's a process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of stress. Take note of the word process, okay? Kasi hindi siya isang pangyayari lang, okay? Kunwari, may nangyaring hindi maganda or nakasakit sa'yo, and then resilience. Resilient ka na agad. It's not like that. It's a process. It's a becoming, okay? It's a process, meaning it involves how you reacted, how you responded, and the strategies or things that you used or did, okay? Things you used or, yeah, strategies that you applied so that you will be able to get back on track. Okay, and be able to adapt into the new normal that you have. Okay, we're all adapting to this new so called new normal. Okay, so my new normal in a grander scheme of things sa buong mundo, sa buong bansa natin, and yung buhay natin, dahil sa mga changes na to, magkakaroon din tayo ng new normal. And how are you adapting right now? Okay, and this process of your adaptation is your resilience and how well you are adapting actually determines how resilient you are. No, so let me share to you my own definition. Ano. Resilience is the ability to bounce forward and finish strong in the midst of difficult of the difficulties of life. Okay, it's a process, it's an out 
become. Again, I said earlier, it's becoming. Okay? So, the thing about life, another thing about life, or another realization that I had about it, is that, again, it's both long and short. It's long because when we were kids, we couldn't wait to grow up. And it's short because when we have grown up, we're surprised na, ha, andito na ako? Ito, nangangalahati na ako sa buhay ko. Tapos parang, minsan yung iba sa atin, nagwa-wonder pa kung ano nang nangyari, kung ano nang nagawa natin. And why is it that even at this point of our lives, when we have grown and we've gone through so many things, bakit parang nagsa-struggle pa rin tayo? Lagi na lang mahirap yung buhay and stuff like that. And feeling natin ang bilis-bilis ng araw and nagkakaroon na tayo ng nagkakaroon na tayo ng mga anxious thoughts kasi nga parang ang bilis ng araw and then ito pa lang yung naaattain natin or meron tayo di ba so but anyway it's long and it's short it's long because we have to live what um an average 65 75 85 if you're lucky you can live until 100 and it's short kasi nga eto na tayo eh. Mabilis lang. Or we are actually uncertain. Who, who knows when it's going to be all over, right? Walang nakakaalam sa atin noon. Alright? Hence, if life is long and that uncertain, we really need to learn how to be resilient. Okay? So, ano ba ang mga challenges natin ngayon? Okay? So, we were talking about challenges, no? So, let's take a look at these ones, no? Things which are, or challenges of the pandemic in the new normal that which are posed to us. Okay, so familiar, most of you familiar kayo dito, you know, the challenges, first, the challenges of working from home. Um, there is that uncomfortable blending of, um, of your work, your responsibilities um, in your job, and your responsibilities um, in your family. Nakita niyo naman yung picture. I bet a lot of you are experiencing this. Whether you have kids or you don't have kids, iba na kasi talaga ngayon, di ba? If, when we are still working offline, meron kang time in and time out, okay? And then, even if some of you are working overtime, sometimes, alam mong pag uwi mo sa bahay, iiwanan mo na yung, pag alis mo, pag time out mo, iwanan mo na yung trabaho mo sa office. And then, switch ka na into your, um, to being a mother, to being a father, okay? Doon sa responsibilities mo sa bahay. At ang iniisip mo na lang ay yung mga bata or yung mga bagay na kailangan mong gawin sa bahay, right? Pero ngayon kasi, wala na. Nawala na yung boundaries. Ang hirap nang hanapin. Or kung gusto man natin lagyan, medyo challenging na siya talaga. Kasi nga, 24-7 ang needs ng mga bata, tama? Okay? So, marami, marami ng mga distractions. Marami na rin bagay na kumukuha ng attention natin. It's, it's quite challenging or difficult to focus on one thing. Okay? Already. Another one is financial challenges. Lahat tayo nakaranas nito. Okay? At different levels. Multinational companies, small companies, every individual, lahat tayo naranasan to. Okay? Kasi nung tumigil ang operations, nung tumigil ang trabaho, hindi naman tumigil ang bills natin. Tama? So, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang paggastos, tuloy-tuloy pa rin ang mga pangangailangan. So, lahat tayo naka-experience niyan. Another one, health problems. Sino dito ang nagkasakit during the time of ECQ? Okay? Na hindi talaga tayo pwedeng lumabas. At hindi man COVID ang sakit mo, pero natatakot ka na pumunta sa ospital. Okay? Natatakot kang pumunta sa ospital kasi andun yung yung fear na ito yung ito lang yung ipapa-check up mo pero hindi mo alam, 'di ba? Kasi nga it, it's the problem is viral. The pandemic is viral. So, hindi mo alam kung may maiuuwi ka ba or ano kasi nga maraming uh, maraming hospitals or yeah, yeah, institutions ang nag a admit ng mga COVID patients. So, ang challenging magpa-check up. Okay? Or kung sino man, may family member ka man na nagkasakit during the ECQ, um, naging stressful ang pag-deal nito 
uh, sa karamihan sa atin. Another one, nagkaroon ng spike sa mental health challenges. I bet a lot of you experienced um, in different levels yung anxiety, okay? yung grief, okay? yung stress, panic, depression, phobia, and shame. Okay, grief kasi because of the losses. We, we, ha we experienced a lot of losses. Um, the loss of what used to be how life used to be, okay? Yung dati nating normal. Yung loss na, yung, um, yung freedom. Kasi at some point, um, we feel restrained. And even now, no, na hindi pa rin talagang, hindi pa rin talagang um, nakapag-transition lahat. At hindi pa rin smooth lahat ng bagay. And worse yung iba sa atin naka-experience ng loss of a loved one. Whether that's because of COVID or a different illness. Okay? So, um, some of us are experiencing, a lot of us are experience, still experiencing in the process of experiencing grief. Okay? Anxiety because we are uncertain of many things. Okay? And all these other mental health challenges. Another one is family problems. Okay? Ma lahat tayo may problema, nakaka-experience ng problema sa pamilya. Yung iba resolve na, yung iba hindi pa. Na isang tabi lang. Ngayon, na ECQ. So you are opted to stay at home. So yung tao na meron kang conflict at home, you have a conflict with at home. Wala kang choice kundi makita siya araw-araw. So, pag may nagawa siya, no? Maraming naka-experience nito. I heard a lot of my friends experience this. And even myself, you know? Luckily, we were able to resolve it. Pero ito, karamihan nga, so na-observe ko, karamihan ng mga problema na ito, no? Ay dati ng problema. Tapos, um, we are simply reacting to it because we are now left with no choice but to face that issue, okay? With that person whom we have an issue with at home. So, minsan, no, naranasan mo na ba, napansin mo, napakaliit lang na bagay nung nagawa ng asawa mo or nung kapatid mo or nung kung sino mang kasama mo sa bahay. Pero yung reaction mo, hindi proportion, okay? Kasi nga, dati na itong mga issues na ito. Okay, so later we're going to talk about ways on how you can deal with that. Pero since ngayon, medyo nag-ease in na tayo into the situation, hopefully, no, hopefully nakapag-adjust na rin at napag-usapan na rin. Kung hindi naman, we'll um, deal with that in a few. Okay, another one, delay in job promotion. Yung iba sa inyo, no, yung iba sa inyo, ma-pro-promote na. Pipirma na lang. Hinihintay na lang yung papel. And then, promoted ka na into the next level. Okay? Kasa lang, nangyari ang ECQ. Okay? Na-quarantine tayo. Na, na, na quarantine tayong lahat. So, kailangan mong maghintay ngayon. Okay? So, magkakaroon tayo ng dilingin. O, sinabi sa'yo ng HR, sinabi sa'yo ng boss mo, okay, hindi natin matutuloy ang process ng promotion ngayon kasi marami tayong ibang mga bagay na mas kailangang asikasuhin. Okay? Kasi nga, nagtra-transition lahat. So, di ba, nagkaroon ka ngayon feeling mo medyo na ano ka, na, na hold back ka. Okay? You were pulled. Okay? You were pulled back from from advancing into your career. Another issue, change of plans. It can be major or minor. Okay? So, yung iba sa inyo, um, nagpa-plano na ng business um, before the ECQ happened, before the pandemic happened, or some of you are already planning to get married or planning to um, move to a new home. Diba? May mga plans na. May mga plans na ginawa may, for this year. At the start of the year. Diba? At the same time, all of these things happen. So, ayun nga. Kailangan mong baguhin. Either kailangan mong i-modify, kailangan mong i-adjust, or baguhin totally. Diba? And it's not easy. Kasi, 
Um, some of you find it easy, may madaling mag-adjust, pero meron ding mga tao na, syempre, tungkol na ito sa buhay mo, di ba? How you want your life to go, how you plan your life. Tapos, dahil lang sa ganito, dahil lang may, may nangyari, hindi natin hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin ganun kaklaro kung sino ba talaga ang, ano ba talaga ang punot dulo, sino ba talaga ang may gawa. But yeah, we we are all um in a way parang napwersa before we are ready to uh, napwersa to change before we are even ready to um say yes to these changes so nakita nyo old way to the new way okay and then online classes for some of you uh who have kids okay um nagtransition din ang mga bata dito uh i heard some parents who are actually um, considering na skip mo na tong school year na to and then next year na lang and um, see how things will go and then next year na lang enroll yung mga bata and then some parents would actually um, would still want to to enroll their kids um, sa school at the same time no syempre um, adjustment another adjustment to another thing na madadagdag to sa sa daily chores nyo, syempre if you're already working at home, tapos online na rin yung classes ng mga bata, definitely gusto mong matutukan at matulungan din sila. Pero syempre, again, yung mga bagay na gagamitin nila, yung mga pangangailangan nila, magkakaroon din ng pagbabago doon. Okay? So magkakaroon din ng adjustment for you. Alright, so you guys familiar with these challenges? Are you facing all of these challenges? These are just some examples. And I believe that bawat isa sa inyo na nanonood ngayon, you have your personal challenge right now. Okay, so insert whatever that challenge is. Now, granted, challenging na nga ang buhay talaga. Okay, na we are already, we have come into that um resolution na ganun nga ang buhay. So paano and we mentioned about resilience. So how can we be resilient? Okay? How can we learn or how can we gain this resilience? Now, here are some of the tools to cultivate your resilience and start to live an empowered life. Simple lang. Okay, simple lang talaga, I promise you. And the first one is physical fitness. Seriously. Yes, yeah, seriously. Okay? Lahat ng clients ko in counseling, hindi namin nakakalimutan na pag-usapan ito at hindi ko nakakalimutan na laging sabihin ito sa kanila. Okay? Diet, exercise, and sleep. I cannot stress the importance of these things enough. Alright? Whatever you put in your body, whatever you do with your body, and um the amount of rest that you get through sleep actually affect uh affect you in many ways mentally the functioning your physical functioning your mental functioning and emotional um emotional state okay so your diet what do you put in your body how much how much carbs do you take in a day especially at night how much sleep do you get and how much exercise? You see, according to studies, yung simple stretching lang, no? Yung warm-up mo lang before you go for a run or before you you do your exercise kung nag-gym ka man or meron kang, meron kang mga gamit sa bahay pang exercise. Yung simple stretching, according to studies, can actually already affect your mood if you have a negative um, mood or feeling negative at the moment it can actually um, alleviate your feelings uh, to it can make you feel better in just 30 seconds guys 30 seconds lang at magbabago yung feelings mo mas magiging positive okay and then yung tulog mo alam nating lahat ito Okay, alam natin lahat na pag kinulang ka ng tulog or pag halos wala kang tulog, hirap na hirap kang mag-function, napaka-irritable mo pa. Okay? So yes, very important that you also take care of your physical fitness. This is the first 
first tool when it comes to resilience. Another one is cognitive flexibility. I like this one. Take a look at this. If you can think of all the worst things that can happen, then you can also think of all the best things that can happen. Both are possibilities. In, in trying times like this, okay, na ang daming nangyayaring hindi maganda, it's so easy for all of us to fall into the trap of thinking negatively. Okay? Marami tayong naiisip na pwedeng hindi magandang mangyari. Okay? So, this time, I would like you to think. Okay? Think, you can get a pen and a paper and then list down all the worst things that you can think of. Okay? Worst things that you can think of that can happen to you or any of your family members during this time of the pandemic. Go ahead and write. What are the worst things that you can think of that can happen during this time of the pandemic? Okay, I bet some of you have written about yourself getting sick or any family member getting sick or yourself or any family member dying of an illness, could be COVID or something else, or contracting the disease or losing your job, okay, right? Because Again, everything can be, everything is really uncertain. A lot of things is, are really uncertain right now. So these are the things, some of the many negative things that you can think of. Now, question. Are these things possible? Or can these things possibly happen? Answer is yes, right? So answer is yes. These things are possible, okay? But, okay, that is just half the truth because there is another truth that will complete the picture, okay? Another, the, the other 50% is that there are also very positive things, okay? Very good things that can happen, all right? Now, I would like you to write down, okay, I'm gonna give you time. I would like you to write that down the best things that can actually happen to you or any of your family members in this time of pandemic. The best things that can happen to you or any of your family members in this time of pandemic. Write it down. As many as you can. Okay, I guess some of you have written all of yourself and all of your family members are healthy, okay, that you will be healthy until the pandemic is over and we get a vaccine for it, or that you get to keep your job, right, and you will recover from the debt that you acquired because the company stopped operating for a couple of months, okay, because of the ECQ, all right, and many other positive things, okay, that you will stay healthy, that you will still be able to push through with the plans that you had with, you know, some small modifications or adjustments here and there. Pero lahat ito, um, these are the best things that you can think of at maraming maraming pang iba. Now, question is, are all of these things possible to happen? Answer is also yes. Okay? So, which means the rain falls on good and bad people. So, you heard about that, right? But yes, 
positive, negative. Both are possibilities. Okay? Both can happen actually. Both can happen. But, you know, wag naman natin natanggalin sa picture. Hindi porkat ang daming nangyayari hindi maganda. Wag natin tanggalin sa picture yung mga possibilities for the best ones. Okay? That's cognitive flexibility. That's um that's learning how to that's actually thought balancing. Okay? So guys, whenever you start to do um to start to think about negative things, don't you forget about the positive things too. Okay? See, life is 10% what happens to you and it's actually 90% how you react. Okay? So there. Now, another one is emotional regulation. This is one of my favorites. Okay? Um, emotional regulation. Emotional regulation. Look at this quote. Sit with it. Even though you want to run, even though it's heavy and difficult, even though you're not quite sure of the way through, healing happens by feeling. You see, I always um, tell my students and my clients, you know, whenever we are in therapy, um, that it's important to acknowledge your feelings so that you will be able to heal it. Isa ba? The only time, the only time that you, that you discover that you have a wound that needs cleansing and treatment is if you start to feel the wound, okay? Hence, walang, hence, Hence, you cannot heal what you don't feel, okay? I would like to give you a scenario. Do you like kids? You find them cute. You like babies, toddlers, you know, little kids. You like them? Okay. Um, did you experience having to, um, having to deal with um, a baby or a kid who is throwing a tantrum, okay? Batang nagwawala, umiiyak, okay? Mga nanay, mga tatay, alam na alam nyo to. Kung meron kang pamangkin, alam mo rin yan. Or marami sa inyong naka-experience na nito, right? So, the question is, okay, I would like to think about this. Um, what do you do to comfort or to pacify a child who is throwing a tantrum? Okay, write it down. Write it down. What do you do to pacify a child who is throwing a tantrum or a baby who is crying? Babies, babies cannot talk. They just cry. They just laugh, right? Okay. So I will guess your answers, maybe some of you. Um, I asked the same question to my previous um, webinars. And some answers, some people answered distract the child. So give a toy or give food that the child likes. Or basa, yun, distraction in general. And then meron ding mga nagsabi na, Meron ding nagsabi na kargahin at yakapin. Meron ding nagsabi na somebody also said um, give food. Or meron ding nagsabi na ibigay sa iba kung hindi mo na alam yung gagawin mo. No? So that's way um, so much better than just leaving the child. Pero I bet wala namang nagsabi sa inyo na iwanan na lang ang bata. Right? Lahat kayo may ginawa. Now think about it. Okay, it will say something, it says something about how you deal with your own emotions. Okay, what do you do with yourself when you are feeling something uncomfortable? When you are feeling anxious about something you cannot point out? Okay, what do you do? Okay, how do you distract, some of you who said you're going to distract a child, how do you distract yourself? Binge watch in Netflix. Get a pint of ice cream of your favorite flavor and finish it. 
or um, go out and have a few drinks with friends or, you know, just keep yourself busy. Okay? Imagine, imagine, let's go back to the baby analogy. Ang mga bata hindi nakakapagsalita, umiiyak lang sila pag uncomfortable sila. So imagine, in pain pala, masakit yung chan. Okay? Hindi naman nasasabi ng bata na masakit ang chan niya. At binigyan mo siya ng pacifier. Or kinarga mo lang. You know? Or, or binigyan mo lang ng pagkain. Tatahimik ba yon? Na-resolve ba yung problema ng bata, ng baby? Definitely not. So, how do you deal with yourself when you have problems? When you have emotions, unsettled emotions? Because you see, these emotions tell you something. Okay? The thing about us, ito, narinig ko na rin ng maraming beses. You know, if you need to cry, if you need to feel it, feel it. But Often, I would hear people say, Baka kasi pag umiyak ako, if I cry, I might not stop anymore. Okay? I might not stop anymore if I start crying. Or, some people would even say, um, I, might get, I might get overwhelmed or something. You know, here's the truth. Are you listening? The truth is, if you start crying, you're going to stop eventually. Okay? When was the last time that you cried? Can you still recall that? Have you stopped? Are you still crying right now? Definitely not anymore. See? You are going to stop. You know what you are scared of? What most people are scared of is that it's not because they're not going to stop crying. It's because if they're going, if you are going to let yourself feel that emotion or let that emotion pass through you, you will for the first time, you will for the first time be aware of the depth kung gano'ng kalalim at gano'ng kasakit ito. Okay? Magiging aware ka doon. Hindi ka takot na baka hindi mo makontrol or hindi ka na tumigil umiyak. Natatakot kang malaman kung gano'ng kasakit yon. Okay? But you know what? I have this proud moment with one client, no? She's very young. And she's dealing with this. Dealing with uncomfortable emotions. And I gave her an assignment. Feel your emotions. If you feel uncomfortable, just sit with it and feel it. And then what she realized upon the, ano, going back to the next session, sabi niya, I feel so empowered after going through that. Because then, even if it was painful, even if it was uncomfortable, I was able to grow my tolerance and patience. And then eventually I realized I can handle it. She handled it. And of course, we have here specific strategies. Like for example, you're dealing with emotions such as um, intense fear or anxiety. Then you have relaxation techniques or anger down till it subsides. Relaxation techniques such as box breathing. So box breathing, you know what box? It has four, four equal sides, right? So in box breathing, if you are already experiencing intense fear or something some, of some sort, you just have to breathe in four seconds, hold your breath four seconds, exhale four seconds, and hold your breath for four seconds to stabilize your breathing. Okay, let's do it. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Hold your breath, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Hold your breath, one, two, three, four. And you just have to do that repeatedly until your um, feelings, uh, until you become calmer. Or count until it subsides when it comes to your anger, okay? Before you say something that will break somebody else for the rest of his or her life, you might want to hold your tongue first and, or just, you know, Mouth words, count words, uh, count numbers until your anger subsides. And go to your bright, open, or wide space, okay? Where you can feel relaxed, where you can breathe, when you, where you can take a walk, okay? Until your feelings are more stable, okay? So yes, emotional regulation. Another tool is caring and supportive relationships. Very important. You know, family, friends, romantic relationships, 
which are characterized by love and trust. I cannot stress this enough. We're going to we're going to explore more on this later, okay? But yes, caring and supportive relationships make all of the challenges, all the burdens of life bearable. Okay? Kasi hindi mo kailangang akuin lahat at buhatin mag -isa. If you have people who are loving and who are trustworthy, then magiging mas magaan. Okay? Hindi man madali, pero mas magaan. And then, spirituality. I love this one as well because spirituality is actually very all-encompassing. It reaches the different areas of your life. Your mental, your mental state, your emotions, and then how you take care of your Self, your body and the way you also deal with other people okay when you have spirituality um, it also it also shows that you have beliefs which are very enduring and these enduring beliefs okay especially if these are very positive ones and very constructive ones will help you get through the challenges of life okay um, successfully all right. It also gives you peace, a sense of hope. Kasi nga, syempre, meron kang pinaniniwalaan na pagkatapos naman ng lahat ng pagsubok ay merong bukas na maganda. Right? So, that gives you a sense of hope. Forgiveness. Oh my God. Forgiveness is one of my favorite, um, the one of my favorite gifts of spirituality. It's also one of the most difficult to give, actually. Okay? It's one of the biggest gifts that one can receive and it's also one of the biggest gifts that one can give. Okay? Pero ito rin ang pinakamahirap na tanggapin na ibigay sa sarili at ibigay sa ibang tao. Have you watched um, A Thousand Words? Yung movie ni Eddie Murphy. It's it's a funny, you know, assignment, no? After nito, if you want to relax, you know, your your assignment is to relax. Um, isingin mo sa araw mo and manood ka ng movie na to, it's really beautiful, and it's a story about forgiveness. Napakaganda. Okay? So, yeah. Um, if you have forgiveness, then you will also have that freedom. Okay? And lastly is purpose, which leads us to our last tool in cultivating your resilience. Meaning and purpose. So purpose means your personal reason for doing something or continuing in life. And meaning is your significance or yung weight kung bakit mo ginagawa ang bagay na ito. According to one commercial of coffee, Nescafe, bakit ka gumigising sa umaga? According to Viktor Frankl, which, who is one of my favorite psychologists, there are actually three three things from where you can actually get your meaning. First one is a person. Okay, a relationship. Maybe you are a mother, a father, a family person. Then, lahat kayo, nagsisikap kayo, nagsusumikap kayo, gawin lahat ng makakaya nyo to, um, to succeed in life because merong mga umaasa sa'yo. And that is really noble, right? Another one is your job. Whatever it is that you do, your craft. Okay, ano yung bagay na sobrang nakakapagpasaya sa'yo at nagbibigay ng dahilan kung ba't ka gumigising sa umaga? Ano yung ginagawa mo na alam mong fulfilling sa'yo at nakakatulong sa ibang tao na helping people in immensely or deeply? Okay, that is, that it could be a meaning in your life. Okay, do you love your job? What do you do right now? What is your calling? Okay? And then another one is your pain. Believe it or not, your pain has a meaning. If you decide to put meaning to it, okay? Um, nangyari na ba sa buhay mo na ang dami-dami mong naging challenges? Okay? Nagsabay-sabay. Could be you, you had a challenge, you faced a challenge when it comes to your job, a relationship ended, or a problem in the family, or whatever it is. Tapos nagsabay-sabay lahat yon. And you just couldn't make sense of it, okay? No matter how much you try, you're looking for answers. You wanted to ask the person, pero wala nang closure, umalis na siya. So, hindi mo ngayon alam, nakahang ka ngayon, okay? And ang hirap. It happened to me. 
There was a time that it happened to me, and all I could do was to pray. And this is what I told God. You know what, God? I really couldn't make sense of this. I'm hoping that I find the answer soon. Or I'm not sure. Maybe I'll find the answer soon, next week, next month, next year, or maybe never. Who knows? I, I don't really know. But I don't want these tears and this pain kasi sobrang sakit talaga. I don't want all of this to just be put to waste. I know that somewhere out there, somebody is also experiencing the same pain because of an uncertainty. Okay? So I don't know how, but you are all-knowing and all-powerful. So I, w- I would like to use this pain and these tears to send my comfort to that person who are experiencing this. Okay, so those are three. You know what the Bible says um, in Ecclesiastes, if you read the Bible, no? whether you're a believer of Christianity or not, it's okay. But it says life is meaningless. And it is not pessimistic, actually. It is very positive because it tells you to be proactive, to have an initiative in life. Because life is really meaningless. It is. Until you put your own meaning to it. So what is your meaning? Right? So there. Now, these are the tools. And let's go to some of the specific and practical ways on how you can actually bring to life your resilient and empowered self. Are you still there? Are you still awake? Okay, we only have a few slides left. And here is the first one. Now, discover who you are, okay? This is one of my favorites. I tell my clients, I tell my students, it's very important that you start with yourself because this will be the foundation of everything. You know, no matter how much you learn about resilient, if you don't have a sense of self, then you don't have a self where you will be applying or who will put to work this resilience that you're going to learn. So yes, What makes you happy? What makes you sad? What makes you angry? What brings your heart to life? Okay? Discover all of these things. Kasi yung alam mo sa sarili mo, ito yung magiging anchor. Yung magiging anchor ng mga bagay, ng mga tools na matututunan mo. Okay? So that you will be apply all of these effectively in your life. Okay? What makes you happy? What makes you sad? These things, the the answers to these things will tell you the things which are worthy of pursuit, okay, in your life. That will eventually give meaning to it, okay? Another one is to practice self-care. Now, practice self-care, these are just examples. Physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, okay? Um... There are different, that's the reason it's very important to discover who you are. Kasi if you know who you are, the things which make you happy, the things which make you sad, then you will know which things to pursue, which things to avoid. Okay? So, and you will also be able to determine the specific ways on how to take care of yourself. Okay? So, kunwari, very important sa inyo ang socialization, ang connection with other people, then definitely, one of the things that you're going to do for self-care is to connect with others, to um, have mean, more meaningful relationships with others. Go out um, go out at specific um, days in a week with important people in your life, okay? And also, if it's important for you to have an alone time, then you're going to then you're going to do things that you like on your own because this actually energizes you, right? For the introverts, it's like that. And for the extroverts, it's the other way. So ano ka ba? Introvert or extrovert ka ba? So discover that. So you will know which energizes you, right? And which depletes your energy. So you can practice self-care. Another one is build meaningful connections. You know, make the effort to form positive relationships with family, with friends, with colleagues, with neighbors. Very, very important. I cannot stress this enough as well. Um, let me just share. My life is really simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. You know what makes me so, what makes me so happy and what actually helps me thrive in this life? Just three things. 
my faith number one okay that's number one my faith number two number two my my relationship number three actually almost equal tong dalawa my job what i do my calling okay being a teacher and being a therapist okay loving people through the two and then very important relationships meaningful ones very close and intimate ones itong tatlo lang na to wala nang iba wala nang shadow and all the other things just follows yung mga ginagawa kong exercise and all kasama na yan lahat pero itong tatlong to okay i just actually uh, teaching these things na realize ko siya Alam ko na siya, pero mas lumalim siya sa akin itong mga nakaraang araw. So, I hope that you guys really get the get the courage or the initiative to take care of your relationship. Okay? This is not, ano, no? Hindi ito yung sinabi lang. Ito ay inaral din. At ito, at ito ay inaral din. And these are actually, this is actually one of the most effective things on how every individual will be able to live a happy life. Meaning, full connections and relationships, okay? This is not easy because it's work, okay? It's work. It's it's the willingness to put in effort, time, energy to build that connection, okay? The willingness to be vulnerable first. The willingness to say sorry first. The willingness to forgive even if it's not easy. Beautiful relationships don't just happen, okay? They are, it, it's a work. These relationships are hard work. And believe me, it's really worth it. It's really worth it. Kasi kahit ikaw pang pinakamagaling na tao sa resilience na nakakaalam yan, or pinakamagaling sa work mo, okay? Or you have achieved so many things. If at the end of the day you don't have anyone to share this with, it's hardly the the fulfillment or the happiness will be hardly multiplied. So yes, build meaningful connections and share and share the love, even the pain. Again, earlier we mentioned if you have caring relationships, the pain or the burden becomes lighter. Okay? Because you have people with you. And then accept change. Wow, accept change. Look at that. I love this picture. Um, you simply replace G with a C and then you have chance. Okay? Because change is actually a chance to new things and to learn new things. Okay? Change is the only constant thing in this life. Okay? There are changes that we like that we like and that's easy and there are changes that we don't like and a lot of these and um, you know changes that we don't like are happening right now but yes even if we don't like it these changes are actually going to help us become more resourceful and see abilities or discover abilities that we have that we didn't know before exist in us okay so it's a chance to learn about what we can do and what we have in us, all right? To live th in this life successfully, okay? So there, accept change and accept people when they change. Because people change. You change and other people will change. It's a part of life, all right? And then practice grounded optimism. Uh, this is actually under the cognitive flexibility that we talked about earlier. When we say grounded optimism, it's not like you're practicing, you know, positivity all the time, even if you have problems. No, you acknowledge the problems. We all have problems. It's, Im it's important to acknowledge that because the moment you acknowledge your problem, then you get to resolve that problem best percent okay and the other 50 percent is already for the ano for the strategies or the things that which you need to do the other the other part of the process you see at the same time when we talk about grounded optimism this is actually um trusting and believing in yourself even in the um 
immensity or kung even gano man natin kalaki yung ating hinaharap. And then, yung ating hinaharap na problema. Look for the silver lining. Count your blessings. I actually had uh, this session with one client. Ano. Um, she's experiencing a lot, um, three different three different uh, mental health issues all at the same time. Okay, and then we did this um, gratitude activity wherein we we listed or thought of things which she like about herself, about her life, and everything else, you know, everything else in her life. And then after that, she said, oh, so, so I asked her, so what do you feel? She said, oh, I feel weird, weirdly happy because it's, I, I couldn't remember the last time that I felt this way. Kasi nasanay na siya doon sa, doon sa negative things that she used, she always thought of. Okay? But when she started counting blessings, ayun, nagkaroon ng, nagkaroon ng biglang change sa kanyang isip. Alright? At the same time, um, hindi lang yan. Maraming studies, actually, maraming studies that says that gratitude, um, practicing gratitude can actually do a lot of wonders or rewiring, positive rewiring in our brain, which will help us to um, be more uh, positive, okay? And then, of course, measure your life in love, according to the song, di ba? Measure your life in love. Seasons of love. <laughs> That's the song. So yeah, um, you know, sometimes it's so easy to judge ourselves depending on what we did or what we did not do, on what we have achieved and what we have not achieved yet. But the thing is, um, it's not all about the trophies or the achievements or how much money we're able to make. Although those things are, you know, uh, con contribute um, to the quality of our life. But more than anything, what's actually, kasi kahit naman anong gawin, minsan kahit anong gawin natin, na ibigay na natin yung best natin, pero hindi sa lahat ng oras, things turn out the way we want them to, right? But, if we measure in love, if we make it a practice to measure in love, depend, um, measure ourselves depending on the love that we put in what we do, and also the love that we have in our lives, a love that we have for ourselves and those which are given to us by people around us. Then, you see, um, our life will be, you know, will be more bearable, will be happier with our life. Kasi we start to look at it in a non-judgmental way. All right? So there. Practice grounded optimism. Another one, laughter is still the best medicine. Yes, cheerfulness. You see, um, nangyari na ba sa inyo, meron kang nakaaway, eh, itong taong to, nakakatawa to, importante yung tao sa buhay mo. So, nag-away kayo, you're already in a heated argument, but he said something which is really funny, so parang, ano yun, nag-switch yung, nag-switch yung mood mo, natawa ka na lang talaga, and then even before, even if you are not ready yet to give up your to give up your anger or your pride, wala na eh, natawa ka na. So, ayun. Um, actually, according to studies, no, music, um, what I said earlier about exercise, 30 seconds, it can change your mood. When it comes to music, 7 seconds approximate, okay? Relaxing music can change your mood, 7 seconds. But laughter, it's instant, okay? You don't have to wait a few seconds. You laugh and that's it. You're happy. Your mood will change. Okay, so watch, watch um really funny videos or um funny and um light or inspiring movies. All right, so laugh more. Focus on solutions. Okay, this is very self-explanatory, guys. When we have problems, it's so easy to be drowned in the na madrown tayo sa mga negativities na nangyayari. Pero nangyari ngayon, lahat tayo na experience natin yan. Ang daming uncertainties talaga. At the same time, no, alam ko, alam ko naman, nararamdaman ko, maraming tao na nakakapag-adjust na actually. Okay, so, so tingin ko lang, no, kasi yun na rin yung nangyayari sa akin, nakapag-adjust na rin talaga ako. And I believe a lot of us were able to do that already. And are still doing that adjustment. Okay? So, see, 
Nung una, akala natin ang hirap-hirap, we just have to stay at home and that's it. Pero ngayon, nakakaisip na ang mga companies and every individual on how to um, uh, ease in through the many changes which are happening. So yeah, my solution. My solution. Alam mo yan. May, kung ngayon hindi mo pa alam, pero you will find a way. Okay? Trust in yourself. Alright, and then create your safe space. Galit ka na, malungkot ka, gusto mong umiyak, okay? Find that place where you can just be or that person whom you can whom you can just be with. Be your real self, okay? Find that place where you can be calm, where you can be grounded, okay? So after that, after you let yourself cry or just whine or just be sad in that place or with that person, you will be recharged and then you will be ready. You will be ready to face life again after that. And then discipline yourself. I read somewhere the amount of discipline that you are willing um that you are willing to um, apply in your life is also the amount of freedom that you can actually enjoy. The amount of discipline that you are willing to apply in your life is also the amount of freedom that you can enjoy. Tama naman, no? Kasi if you are able, if you will be able to manage your time and manage your energy very well, right? So you will have, you will have time for, you know, the really important things. Okay, and energy for the really important things in your life. And even if you have to accomplish many things, okay, but if you have managed your time um, and gave more time to things which you love to do or people whom you love to be with, then you will be more energized and you will feel free that you are able to live your life according to the way you want it. Again, it's not easy. It's a practice, but it is possible. And lastly, okay, lastly, pray and keep swimming. Give yourself the grace of letting go, letting it all go, then keep going. I know that a lot of you are trying your best, have been trying your best. Okay? Ang hirap, ba? Maraming challenges. But ever since, even before pa ng pandemic, you have been trying your best to make your life work, to, to achieve whatever, the kind of life that you want. At the same time, maraming mga bagay na hindi natin nakokontrol, lalo na sa pagkakataon ngayon. Okay? And nakita mo, even if you have tried your best, I, I've seen it. I've seen it in my life, lives of the people I'm, whom I love, um, friends, clients, okay, students. They all try their best. May nangyari at maraming nagbago sa isang iglap. Okay? And again, uncertain. You cannot explain why it happened. So, pray. How, pray to God, however you conceive Him to be, or, or yeah, perceive Him, however you perceive Him to be, um, how, whatever your relationship, relationship with Him, okay? You can pray, whether you call Him God or the universe or love, you can pray. And then after that, pick yourself up and then keep going, okay? So, bounce forward, okay? Pray and keep swimming according to Dory. So, there. Well, I hope that you guys were able to, some, to get something out of this webinar and learn um, about the tools of being resilient. Ito naman ay hindi end all, be all, okay? So, marami itong mga tools na ito para maging resilient ka. All right, and it's not like you have to do all of these things. You can, you know, pick one or two or three that you can um, put in your um, daily schedule, okay, so that you can take care of yourself. All right, and find out which one will work best for you, okay, so you will, you know, be able to grow that resilience. 
And I would like you, I would like to leave you guys with this note. You're actually already resilient. Yes, you are. Simula pa lang nung pinanganak ka sa mundong to, marami ka ng adjustments na kailangan gawin. Okay? So, you already have it in you, okay, in some amount. You just have to allow yourself to discover it, okay, sa pamamagitan ng mga difficult circumstances in our life. Okay? So, yes, be resilient and be empowered so that you'll be able to really thrive in this life. Thank you so much, and I hope that you will have a great day ahead of you. God bless you.